This is the Capto, and this supposedly slips before it chews your rope up, but so did the rescue center. <laughs> it slips on an 11 mil instead of breaking it because this doesn't have teeth like a lot of devices do. So let's put this on here and see what happens. That's, that's not, what the hell? That's not the slipping I think people are imagining when they think it slips. That rope is a different shape. I do love the rescue center as an ingenious compact design that works really great though, so. Yeah, it's a great tool. It's a great tool. Who are these designed for? Because this is a little heavy for an ascender slash pulley. Anybody that's like fire truck centric uh, in the technical rescue community. And it's also targeted at the rope access, pro rope access community. Um, it's a multifunction tool. You can use it for a lot of different things. So there's a pulley on this side. And in the SimC video where the unit does slip on the rope and they show it. Uh, it is in a three to one configuration already. So we're going to start with a eight or a nine mil rope. And obviously that will slip just to work our way up until we get to the thickest rope I have laying around. And we'll try it in my device and Tom's device. I'm curious to see where, like if, for example, large um, Capto on an 11 millimeter rope as a rope grab in a pulley system. Mm. How big of a deal is that? Is that a hard no or a, yeah, you can do that, but it might slip a little bit. Yeah, maybe. maybe no big deal. What force do you want things to slip at? How do we know if it's good or not? We don't want to blow up our system. So force limb, like you see people double up Prusix yeah. and that's not good because you, that's going to go up to like 5,000 pounds. You want it to slip before it breaks. You want a force limiter in there. So between 1,000 and 2,000 pounds and that's protective. If it starts slipping, that's your visual indicator that you've got a problem in your system. What that's edition great. is your book? Sixth edition, 25th anniversary. And when was the out. fifth edition printed? 2017. So a lot has changed and this is a great update. Up Every section uh, has been updated. These did not exist when you wrote the last one. A lot of stuff did not exist. <laughs> okay. no, no clutches, no maestros. Wow. Um, no, a bunch of stuff is new. So we sell his book and you can special order stuff like this at hownotto.com. Let's get into the weeds on how this works because I think you need a little bit of context before we pull on it. So this takes two actions to open. You have to do it a second time and you can see which direction the rope goes. So the other size that they have has basically the same thing except this is a little bit wider for wider ropes. So this eye is intended for the soft shackle that they made for this in order to either clip it off to yourself or pull it to reset. And this basically replaces this. Now, one way I do wanna test this is just putting this rope in here just like this and pulling and see if that slips in the same way that I see in the CMC video where they put it through their progress capture, which could be a clutch and this pulls on the pulley, which I think might orientate it a little differently. So let's see how it reacts with this. And let me show you what we're gonna pull with. Since my hydraulic is limited on throw, we are going to use the drill powered pulley, which we finally have a nice case where it has grease, repair kits, and spare bits. We have an entire video on how this works, and this is going to be able to pull more than this will be able to grab on, and it will pull infinitely since I don't have eight firefighters here to help me pull on this rope. So I was told this was an eight mil. It's between eight and nine, and we are going to put it on here just like this, and we're going to pull just like this to start out with. So be, we're using the black rope because we gotta just pull this direct. Oh, wow, how's it for you? It couldn't be easier. <laughs> cool, that was half a K in. So let's set it up on the three to one now. And okay. we have the, the CMC clutch that we're gonna use as our pulley. Not designed for this thin of a rope, but it's it, it does work. Match the symbols by yep. hand. There you go. This was already loaded on the clutch and I wanted to add some mechanical advantage. I could slip that on right there. And there you go, peak. Oh, that did not take very much. About the same on this side. So if we're getting 0.2 there and 0.6 there, that's that's pretty good. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. So this is a nine mil rope measuring around 9.2. 1.16 on this side. Now we're gonna try it as a three to one. And 1.4, that's, that's really efficient. All right, next is a 10 mil rope. So it started to slip at two. Now let's try it as a three to one. Nice. Slipping at 2.3, that's pretty safe. 
So what is the concern in this rescue scenario? We want a force limiting device that will slip not too far above the expected load. We don't want it to keep locked on and generate enough tension to damage components or anchors or... Because you can have a team of people pull Absolutely. so hard that would... Yeah. And you know, one of the things in rescues that happens is when it gets hard, we tend to recruit bystanders, anybody <laughs> that just wanders by. It's like, hey, you guys come over here and help pull. And you could end up with 15 people on a haul team without anybody really kind of realizing what's happening. And the pulling power is tremendous. Benefits for this over a Prusik? Um it's just really efficient to put on and take off. It replaces a carabiner, uh, pulley, and rope grab. Let's try the one that's designed for 12.5 to 13. That's slipping. At 0.42, that's a lot lower. These are size-specific devices like a lot of devices are. Something I really like about having a store now is when I need something, I can just go grab it. This is a performance static 11.0. So let's try this next. Slip. Yes. 5.75. That's a good number. Let's try this next. Already slipping. The noodle maker. 2.46. That's less than half. That's all right. Oh, it stopped. It's slipping. So this one feels a little glazed. It's pretty high tension to be rubbing something against it. Ooh, 6.9. Let's try it with this guy. Oh, that was quick. 2.33 peak. So this was a 716th Sterling HTP, but now it's so fuzzy it measures at 12 millimeters. Eight point two is when it slipped. Now what's wild to me is it changed the shape of this rope to be like less than nine. This is still twelve in this direction. There we go. Four point five nine. It's kind of where you want it, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Should we get a rope wet? <laughs> I'm pretty tired. I get asked to test things that I've never thought to test before, and then they go viral, and I'm just like, wow. So I don't know how popular this video will be because this is a follow-up to that one. Works super well as designed, um, really smooth. We did a bunch of testing where we're using new state-of-the-art devices. This is new tech, rope grab pulley combination, um, the clutch, the ID, all these uh, new things. They're all in the sixth edition uh, Essential Technical Rescue Field Operations Guide, 25th anniversary. He just finished it. Orion sells it. From the time of filming this, they're two weeks away from actually landing uh, on the shelf. And we will be stocking that in the store and you can special order all the CMC products. And of course we've got this stuff in stock. So thanks for watching. Cheers. Awesome.